near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. I can't believe this book is actually out and in my hands. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions, and join me today for an overview of the Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Omnibus from DC and IDW. So, let's go ahead and get started. So what did I mean that it is finally here, finally in my hands? Well, this particular omnibus was solicited and actually it was in the catalog for about a year and a half, uh, almost two years, and then DC decided to cancel it. When it was found in the catalog again, I, I kind of hesitated to get too excited about it, but then it finally made it in the solicitations and here we are. It is finally out. Now, there's a little bit of confusion as to what's going on with the actual book from retailers because I've had retailers reach out to me and ask me well, what was going on with the actual book. So what happened was that PRH didn't get their stock from DC yet. However, Lunar, the other distribution of DC Comics, did. So Lunar started shipping out these books and DC admitted that it was a mistake, that everybody should have gotten their books at the same time. So if you've got it pre-ordered from... A, a, you know, a local comic book store or Amazon or or online retailers that haven't received their copies, rest assured you're still going to get it. It's just that there's a little bit of a delay. I think it's August 1st when most places are going to get it. Some places have already gotten it. So what we're looking at here is the first omnibus. I hope they make more because I've really enjoyed the stories in here. As you see down here, it's an IDW DC collab, Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles omnibus. Here we have not just a new representation of the characters, but also the classic Eastman and Laird characters. So here you have James Tiny in the fourth, of course, writing the stories. Freddie Williams, the second one of my most favorite underrated artists, providing the artwork for 95% of the book. And then Jeremy Caldwell providing the colors, and they are spectacular colors. Uh, here's what the spine looks like. You can see the... Actual design in the back of the book is all around here. So what you see here on the spine is wrapped around here. And maybe the idea was to have it framed. I'm not sure. Now, this is a different cover than the one that what we call a placeholder. Both Marvel and DC and, and Image, most publishers do this. They have a placeholding image in the catalog and in the solicits. And they do say, you know covers could change and that's what happened here but it makes more sense i mean i love kevin eastman but this is more true to what's inside of the collection this is a freddie williams the second piece right there it's a new piece and then we have the back cover here with batman looking all badass and the four turtles surrounding him the isbn being a hundred dollars right there the complete adventures of the dark knight and the heroes in a half shell collected in omnibus format for the first time it's interesting that they use the word the complete adventures because there is something missing from here. Let's look underneath the dust jacket here. Uh, so you can see the flaps. You have that Eastman, Batman, and Donatello right there. And then a little bit about the creators, James Tiny and Freddie Williams II and Jeremy Caldwell. And I think the one that stood out to me is Jeremy's... Like, th this was so beautifully written about him wanting to color since he was a kid him wanting to be in comics since he was a kid thought it was a really nice bio right there underneath the dust jacket is this insane image right there so if you're a fan of dc comics or turtles uh, or both then you know exactly what's going on you see the red skies you see this particular outfit and then you see crane right there uh yeah that's about to get crazy but that's in the third story so we're gonna crack this book open talk about the stories collected in here mention what's missing from here and then check out a lot of the back matter there's a lot of extras in this one but in case you have not read this and you love going blind into stories then you know maybe skip ahead to the back matter so you don't get anything spoiled for you all right cracking the omnibus open you have this wonderful end sheets like i mentioned 
big fan of Freddie Williams the second here. You have Krang, Bebop and Rocksteady, and the Shredder. And then you have this Eastman pair uh, piece of art right here, which features some of the Bat family, and again, Bebop and Rocksteady, and Casey Jones and April O'Neil there. And Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Omnibus, and the credits right there. Um, so they do credit uh, Ryan Ferrier as one of the writers and Kevin Eastman as the artist, but I think that's in the third volume, if I'm not mistaken. Jeremy Cowell doing the complete colors for this. Here is your table of contents where you're going to find each of these particular stories. The forward, it's a beautiful forward by Kevin Eastman talking about his love of comics and moving to New York, seeing New York City for the first time and just kind of coming up with stories in his head. Freddie Williams II talking about just this wonderful opportunity to get to draw this. And I'm glad that he did because that really put a, his name out there for a lot of people. I've been a fan of his since his days of drawing Robin. I always loved his, I don't want to say cartoony style, but he did definitely have an animated style. For this, he just brings it up to the next level. Like, you're about to see some stuff that's just so crazy how he's able to do this. And I think the best way I was sitting down and trying to come up with a way to describe his art during this run, and the way that I, I can best describe it to do it any kind of justice, is he was able to take the black and white Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird comic, the Batman comics that you grew up with, because you, especially in the third volume, you're going to see a lot of that, and this modern style... Plus this cartoon style, because the Turtles were cartoons at one time too in the 80s, right? And Batman had his own animated series. And kind of mesh them together and give us this wonderful, just badass style that kind of makes you think, okay, these Turtles were pulled from either the cartoon, they were pulled from the IDW comic. This Batman could be the classic Batman, or it's the Batman from new comics, from the New 52, from Rebirth. So, I like that about his art. It, it's so good. And now, the pitch. What, 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 how could these characters meet? Batman lives in a fictional city of Gotham. The Turtles live in New York City, and they're in two different universes. One, of course, licensed by DW, and the other one by DC. So, the premise, the pitch is really easy. The Turtles get transported to Gotham City, but they're not alone. Shredder and his Foot Clan also gets transported over there. And Splinter, their master, gets transported over to Gotham City. As Batman finds out, with the help of Lucius Fox, because he gets one of their size, Raphael's size, I don't know why I said one of their size. Oh, is it the plural sigh? One of their sigh. Anyway, he starts examining the metal in the sign and realizes that it's made up of different elements. It's, it's not just a metal that is found on Earth Prime, or what he knows as his Earth. The problem is that the Psy starts changing and the Psy starts to develop elements from his own Earth. So he translates that as, oh, these creatures that are stuck here, we don't have mutagen here. They're going to start turning into turtles. They're going to start mutating back to what they are here on this Earth. So Splinter overhears this and is like, yeah, this is the part right here. Oh man, we got to make it back to our Earth or we're going to mutate back to animals. And then there's Oroko Saki, of course, teaming up with the Penguin because he wants these... Uh, <laughs> it's all a MacGuffin, right? He hires the Penguin to go and find these pieces to put together so he can make his own machine to travel back to his world. And, of course, there's a lot of double cross. And it's just a nice, nice to see the fights between these characters here. Now, the first story, I will say, without going too much into it, takes place during the Grayson era of New 52 DC. And what that means is that Dick Grayson during this time was just a super spy. So he wasn't Nightwing. During this time, Tim Drake, Robin, wasn't Robin. He was Red Robin and hanging out with the Teen Titans. So the only Robin that was Robin during this time was Damien. And he does show up through here. And then, of course, you've got the Red Hood being the Red Hood, Jason Todd out there, and Batgirl. But by the time you get, and you can find out exactly who double crosses who, if the turtles make it back to their dimension, 
or if they stay here and turn into little turtles. Let's look at the second volume. So the second volume is a little bit of the same premise as the first volume, right? Because, oh, I didn't even talk about what's collected in here. Okay, so in here you get Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1 through 6. That's the first volume. That's what I keep calling the first volume. Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, 1 through 6. So we're looking at the second volume here. And then Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, 1 through 6. So they are in here. The only thing that's missing is, and I wish they had collected, and I get why they didn't, is the Matthew Manning and John Somariva uh, Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures, which is a team-up from Batman the Animated Series, like those characters, and then the TMNT Nickelodeon Animated Series. I thought that would have been so fun to put as extras. I think there were only four issues of that, not six. But I get it. It's a completely different uh, creative team. It's a different tone. It doesn't really add anything to the story. It just would have been a nice extra to kind of flesh out the pages in here. Because uh, this book has 576 pages. We're going to be looking. There's a lot of extras. All right. So the second story of Batman Ninja Turtles is kind of the same. Except this time around, Batman and Robin make it the god. Uh, out of Gotham and into New York City. So now they're in the universe of the Turtles. But they're not alone because now Bane is also in the universe and other characters start appearing through here. And Bane has taken over the Foot Clan and he's introduced the concept of Venom to the Foot Soldiers. So everybody gets all beefed up in this. And there's a couple of twists and turns here as to how they resolve this. Uh, Casey Jones gets involved in this particular story, but by now we're looking at the rebirth era of DC. So now you have Dick Grayson back as Nightwing, you have Tim Drake back as Robin, and if those characters show up, well, maybe. April plays a big part in all this, and then of course Batman's trying to solve the problem of, okay, we gotta get Batman and Robin and Bane back to Gotham where we belong. We can't just stay here. And of course, Bane has other ideas. Like I said, everybody gets venomed up, so it's it's a really badass fight. Again, just look at this freaking badass artwork by Freddie Williams II. It's so good. I love this stuff. All right, let's look at the third and final story. So the third and final story opens up with the Red Skies. And if you've read DC Comics for a while, you know what that means. That means there's a crisis at hand. So the Red Skies open up, and we see a different type of Batman in this world. And he's after somebody called the Smile Man, or the Smiling Man, who runs the Smile Clan. So it's kind of like a mashup of the Foot Soldiers and Joker's gang. As a matter of fact, the beginning of this is nothing but a mashup. You have Killer Croc that looks a lot like Bebop. Um, and then you have Clayface looking a lot like Rocksteady. Uh, you have Deadshot in there. And then you have the Smiling Man, who's like a mashup of Shredder and the Joker. But Batman isn't alone because he has his own mashup team of characters of that kind of look like the Red Hood. Or actually, that might be Azrael, honestly. No, no, it could be the Red Hood. Uh, and Raphael. Then you have Donatello and Tim Drake right there. You have Leo as Nightwing. I love that. And then Mikey as Damien. So... Not everything is exactly the way that it's supposed to be. And, you know, you might be reading this and be a little bit confused, but the more you read it, the more you find out that there's a reason why this world is the way that it is, and they have to fix it. And it all has to do with Krang wearing that particular outfit. So, yes, you probably noticed that this turtle, and, of course, underneath the dust jacket and on the cover... That the original turtles appear through here, or at least one of them. The black and white Eastman and Lair turtles appear through here. Because we are talking about multiverses, and we're talking about the end of everything as you know it. And only a couple of people remember the way the world was supposed to be. So, that's pretty much the premise of the third series. And you can find out for yourself how it all wraps up, and what stays in each universe from their counterpart universe. I thought it was a really sweet ending. I actually like all the endings of these. All right, let's look at the back matter. So 
I wasn't exaggerating when I was saying that this has a lot of extras. This is nothing but extras. So we're looking at variant covers here. We're looking at second printings. We're looking at pinups. Some beautiful pieces of artwork. This is a piece by Kenneth Rockefort. Um, there's pieces just by different artists. And then there's different color variations of the covers. Didn't realize how many covers there were exactly. There's original pencils in here. There's the pitch for the original series, the second series, and the third series. It's like James Tynion had to write a pitch for all these series. This is a animated style right there by Michael Alred and his wife, Laura. And there's a lot of Eastman artwork in here. And, of course, Freddie Williams II, including this piece right here. I love that. That is awesome. That's without the inks or colors so you're going to see a lot of popular artists take on the turtles and it's interesting years ago i remember going to a convention and talking to todd mcfarlane and eric larson because all of them had drawn turtles and i was wondering what was their fascination with turtles and i remember it was eric larson that told me it was like every comic book artist one time or another drew a teenage mutant ninja turtle because they all were obsessed with this independent title and he was like i don't care if it's todd i don't care if it's jim jim valentino was there too or sam keith and actually yeah actually sam keith drew some turtles we've all drawn turtles at one time whether it was published or not or we did it for fun everybody was obsessed with the teenage Mutant ninja turtles so yes there's a lot of cover artists there and then you have the developing art here the style that freddie williams the the second went for to put the series together uh, you do have character designs back here that i don't want to get into especially when you get into the third series because that there's a couple of surprises in there and you know there's some big plot points so i'll skip those and just look at some of this original art he's just an amazing artist would love to see him do a, one of the big flagship titles at marvel or dc there's the bat family Some more original artwork, including the confrontation here with the original Raphael. I think I can show these. These are the designs of the things I was talking about earlier. So you have Leo and Nightwing. Let's see here. Yeah, that is definitely Red Hood. Thought it was Azrael for a second. Then there's Batman, his mashup. Donnie with Tim Drake. Laughing Man and Harley Quinn. And then Mikey and Damien. And then Splinter and Alfred. And you can find out what other characters have mashups in here. It's all in the story and in the extras. There's lots of miscellaneous artwork, original concept pieces, and pieces he did for conventions. Just beautiful collection. Now, I, you know, some people are looking at this. Hey, I'm surprised they added this stuff. Oh, that's right. There was an animated movie that was based on the stories in here. Um, and there were toys of those. So I know that. Some people are looking at the extras here and saying, whoa, that's way too many extras. I'm not a fan of that. I'm a big fan of extras. Like The reason I love books like this, the reason I get limited edition Blu-rays and 4Ks is because of all the extra goodies. Uh, to have a collection like this, I would have been fine with just the trade paperbacks or the deluxe editions. But Omnis, to me, always should have lots of extras. And I'm, the more, the merrier. Like I said, the thing that I wish I had collected in here was the cartoon crossover the batman ninja turtles adventures now let's look at the binding 576 pages it is sewn binding this is a book that i noticed it had tight binding at first i had to open this one up and stretch that spine probably about four times which is really weird for a book that only has 576 pages um but it's not bad it opens up fine now i didn't have any issues reading the stories in here and it laid down like this there's a little bit of gutter loss so you're gonna have to hold down some of the pages to see the full art but i mean that's no different than a lot of the books published by both companies dc and marvel these days now as i was flipping through here i'm sure you probably noticed uh, but for the people that skipped all the way to the back just to see the back matter the covers are textless and there's no credit in the back or telling you what issue you're on. But rest assured, these are all drawn by Freddie Williams II. So, 
I did want to point that out. Um, also, before I end the video, a big thank you to Organic Price Books for sending us a copy of this omnibus. Much love to you guys. Uh, but that's it. That's it. That's all I got. I didn't even throw a cowabunga in there. Or I, what was the the solicits hat cowabatga or something like that? Well, maybe it's better off that I just end it with that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, build, and of course the premise of the stories collected in here. Let me know if you were first a Turtles fan or if you were first a Batman fan. What led you to get this particular crossover? Or if you're just interested in both characters. Did you watch the movies? Did you wish that they had collected the Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures stories in here? I would love to know all those comments down below. And if you want them to make more of these type of crossovers. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.